truck drivers. What's a creepy story you've got from the middle of nowhere? If you like what you see, hit subscribe and let your friends know about Thread Tonic. Account 1. Not a truck driver, but once I was driving through the Canadian Rockies late at night and had just passed through a small town. So I'm driving through the pitch black and I need to stop to pee and have a smoke. But because it's so dark, I miss the last rest stop for a while. No problem. The highway is completely deserted. So I pull to the side of the road, have my pee while staring out into the dark, and then light up a cigarette and stand by my car. As I'm standing there, I see the figure of a man just walking out of the tree line. I'm miles from civilization with patchy cell service, and there isn't a soul on the road. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, and maybe it was a deer, but nope. This was a man. So I calmly walk back to the driver's door and get in, locking the doors behind me. I'm keeping my eye on this guy as I nervously smoke and have my car in drive, ready to peel out. But for some reason, I just stayed put. The guy walks right up to my passenger door and knocks on the window. I crack the window and ask what's up. He replies to me in a very, very serious tone. I need you to call the cops. I cautiously ask why, and he tells me he had gone out into the woods to kill himself. But he couldn't go through with it because he thought of his daughters right before he was about to do it. I call the cops while the guy quietly cries outside. He had a kitchen knife that he was going to use on himself. So I stayed in the car and advised him to maybe leave the knife on the ground before the cops arrived. The cops came and got him. But before they left with him, I gave him a solid heart to heart and wished him well. I still think about him. I hope he was able to turn things around. Count two. I pull into a Purdue plant, drop my empty trailer, and go park where they allow bobtails to sit, right next to a nice little pond. My pickup was in 12 hours, so I do my PTI and lay down in the bunk. At about 3 a.m., I hear something tapping on my passenger side door. I get up, look out the window expecting to see someone, maybe a driver asking for a lumper check, but no one's there. I think maybe I'm hearing things, so I go back to lay down. As soon as my head hits the pillow, I hear the tapping again, except this time it's on my driver's side. Same thing as before. I jump up and look out my window, but nothing's there. I double lock my doors just in case and open my side hatches so I can hear what's going on outside. After about 15 minutes, I hear a very light splat, splat, splat going along the driver's side of the truck. I slowly get up planning to look out my window at the exact moment whoever it is knocks on my door. Then I hear a thud coming from the roof of the cab. I stop, grab my tire thumper off its hook, and ready myself for whatever the hell is going on. Then a motherfucking goose falls off the top of the truck and lands on my hood. It stands up, waddles back and forth, and looks at me. As we make eye contact, the tapping at my door starts again. I say, fuck it, and throw open the driver's side door, and there's another damn goose waddling away with all the speed it can manage, honking like a five-year-old who just found the horn on his new bike. The pond I parked next to had a ton of them just dicking around. Needless to say, it was hard to sleep that night because every couple of minutes the damn geese would peck at my door or land on the cab and waddle around. Account 3. Trucker here. I think the best creepy thing that ever happened to me was when I was heading from Tucson, AZ, up into Salt Lake City, UT. Well, the main highway had been taken out in a flash flood and was under construction, so I had to take a weird detour through the mountains in lower Utah. Well, it was getting late and I was getting tired, so I pulled off onto the shoulder and went to sleep in my bunk. Now this was in the middle of nowhere. The closest town was like 40 miles away, so it is completely pitch black outside once I turn the lights off. Anyway, around 4 a.m., I wake up because I'm hearing something messing with my truck, like playing with the air and power cables between my cab and the trailer, which is literally six inches from where my head is at, but on the outside of the cab. Then I feel something climb onto the landing that's on the back of my truck, and it shakes my whole truck, so I'm guessing something around 200 to 300 pounds was climbing around back there. I'm thinking like a mountain lion or a bear. At this point, I'm wide awake, and I want to get this thing away from me. So I slam my hand into my cab wall, trying to scare whatever is out there, slam hard enough to really make it loud. I then hear someone, a male, scream bloody murder, and I hear them fall off the back of my truck. 
I then hear about 15 other people all around my truck yelling. I climb up front, turn on my lights, and illuminate a squad of army reserves doing their midnight ruck march and capture drills. It turns out these guys were supposed to go find an abandoned truck and secure it for their midnight drills. That truck was three miles back down the road. They were not expecting me to be sleeping there and thought I was part of the drill. I'm ex-military, so after explaining I was not part of their test and legit was just there out of coincidence, we laughed it off. They had to radio their CO and tell him I was there and not have the other squads bother me. Account 4. I used to work as a road train driver in the Gascoigne region of outback Western Australia. A lot of black dog phenomena on night shift. I would see all kinds of things appear in the shadows because of fatigue, or three goats would change into some sort of beast. One time I swear I nearly ran over a corgi, which would be astronomical odds there being one in the wild in this part of the outback. One night I pulled up to sleep, let the engine run cold for ten minutes, then tried to sleep. I woke up to noises, not voices, but some sort of order to the noises and the whole cab of the truck was shaking. I looked in the mirror and saw shadows around the vehicle. I turned the truck on and switched on every single light attached to the thing and hastily continued my run to the port. This is a big cab. It would have taken a lot to move it. I rationalize it as it being windy with some goats around the truck in fatigue. Either way, it scared the fuck out of me and I never slept on night shift again. Account 5. I used to deliver hotshot freight across the Great Plains, Minnesota area. One night around 2 a.m., I was hauling across North Dakota trying to reach Montana by morning. I was delivering a particularly valuable tractor part that a farm desperately needed for the following day. I began to notice some highway hypnosis sneaking up on me, but it didn't really bother me because I'd been through it hundreds of times before. Anyone who has driven across North Dakota knows that it is incredibly flat. Like, really flat. There also tend to be very straight and long roads. It's somewhat easy to see things on the road that are far away, even at night. I noticed something long on the road, spanning my entire lane, approximately half a mile in front of me. I slowed down a little and prepared to move into the opposite lane, thinking it was some retread off a blown tire. As I got closer, I noticed it was two people laying head to toe across the entire lane. I swerved into the other lane, successfully avoiding them, and came to an almost complete stop. But they didn't move. Not an inch. I was just about to back up and check on them when I remembered a story that an old graybeard colleague of mine told me. He told me that in certain remote areas, people will lie down in the middle of the road and wait for a car or truck to stop and see what's going on. At that point, the road layers, along with whoever else is hiding in the nearby bushes, will beat the shit out of the driver and steal his vehicle, leaving him in the middle of nowhere. I decided not to back up. And when the two people in the road saw me put my truck back in gear and drive away, they both got up and walked toward the shoulder. I called the police and explained what happened, but we were so far away from civilization that I doubt anything came of it. Thanks to that old gray beard, I got to keep my truck, my job, and my teeth. Account 6. Parked off an exit ramp at about 3 a.m. for my 10-hour. The moon was full and high and I spotted an unmistakably human figure in a nearby cut cornfield. A little spooky, but I just wrote it off as an old timer putting up a scarecrow for the grandkids. Started watching a few YouTube videos before turning in, and out the corner of my vision, I thought I saw movement. I shut my lights off to get a good look, saw the figure, but nothing else. I couldn't be sure, but it looked like maybe it was in a different spot. Maybe a little closer, even. I was definitely feeling a bit spooked. The highway was devoid of anyone besides a car passing every ten minutes or so. I didn't want to, but I had to jump out to pee. I considered a bottle, but I told myself I was being childish. I took a look at the figure, and it was right where I figured it should be. I hopped out, walked between my truck and trailer, and started leaking. Every fiber of my being wanted to look. I told myself again I was being foolish, but I couldn't help it. I looked out. The field was empty. The figure wasn't there. My stomach dropped, I pinched off and jumped back in. I took off down the highway, didn't give one shit about a violation. Stopped 40 minutes up the road at a well-lit and very full loves. Haven't stopped on a ramp since. Account 7. Used to do deliveries, not actually a truck driver, though. I used to have this regular that was out in the boondocks, 25 miles out of the way of civilization, and smack dab in the middle of two large towns. 
I would drive this route maybe once a month and would always pass at least one car driving towards me due to the sheer length of the drive. There was a small group of old houses on this route that were really broken down, and I had never seen anyone around them in six-plus months of driving the route. Always assumed they were vacant because they didn't look livable. Well, I was driving out to this customer one fall afternoon. I had been driving for a very long time without seeing a single car drive towards me. Finally, I drove past the abandoned houses, and there was one old lady in her front yard pushing an old manual grass cutter, but she stopped in her tracks as I drove towards her. I took it as a sign I was speeding or something and slowed down. I took a quick glance in my rearview mirror after passing by, and she was staring straight at me. She dropped the grass cutter and turned 180 degrees to do this. It was just very odd and definitely set off my spidey sense. Never saw her again or anyone else on that route by those houses in the 10 months I drove it. Account 8. Not the middle of nowhere, but a trash route in a pretty rural area. We were at a stop loading trash when a pickup stopped behind us. A petite woman in scrubs that were covered in blood got out and asked for directions to Lake Jack Nolan. She said there was a deer that had been hit by a truck and she had been sent to remove the remains. She never said who sent her, but she wasn't moving a deer anywhere at her size. We gave her directions and sent her on her way. We all wondered if she was going to dump a body or something. She was already covered in blood, in a nice truck, and was supposed to be on her way to move roadkill that was far too heavy for her to handle. Then we went back to work. Account 9. Not sure if this story is creepy, but it's definitely scary. My father was a truck driver in East Africa in the 80s and early 90s. During the years leading up to the Rwandan genocide, my father was passing through Rwanda. He reached a checkpoint and was forcibly removed from his truck at gunpoint. Apparently, he looked like he belonged to the Tutsi tribe, and they put him in a cage with other Tutsi prisoners. He tried communicating that he wasn't Rwandan, but no one spoke the same language as him. Every night, they would take about five people from the cage and slaughter them in front of him. After the third night, he saw a man who spoke a little bit of Swahili, which my dad spoke, and told him that he's not Rwandan and showed him his ID. Somehow that guy got him out, and he was handed the keys to his truck and was on his way. Account 10. Driving through an abandoned section of Baltimore at 3 in the morning, my CB radio turned itself on and crackled for a bit. Out of nowhere, some voice over the radio said in a deep, southern drawl, I ain't got no panties on. I could see up and down the interstate for miles and saw not one set of headlights. Account 11. Driving through rural NM Bisti area with the crazy melted rock look. No plants or anything, just rock and sand. Monsoon time, raining cats and dogs, just pouring so hard you could barely see going 20 mepre. Thunder and lightning just rocking the car. Sometimes turning into hail and pounding you. Just a nasty storm. Came around a corner and the whole countryside was legit on fire. Like 20 foot tall flames, hundreds of yards in all directions, while pouring rain at dusk. Just rocks and dirt wildly on fire in the pouring rain. Just slowly drove on, it was totally freaky and surreal. Honestly thought I may have hallucinated it. Checked the news, a propane truck slid off the road going way too fast and apparently busted open pretty violently and lit on fire. Never saw the truck, must have been behind something. Felt a bit bad after about not stopping. Account 12. A good buddy of mine is a long-haul trucker for my company. A few months ago, he woke up in a parking lot surrounded by police. Some dude had gotten shot and dumped 15 feet from his truck. Account 13. My dad drove a truck between Edinburgh and London and tells this story often. He was driving down the motorway and looked to his right, saw a woman with a Miss Trunchbull bun, as he describes it, staring at him with a terrified expression from a car next to him. Before he really knew how to react, the car pulled off at the next exit, and my dad, although shaken, carried on. About half an hour later, a different car with a different driver pulled alongside my dad, with the same woman in the passenger seat, with the same expression on her face. My dad thinks, fuck this, and plans to pull into the next services to report it as even if it's nothing or misunderstanding. Better to be safe than sorry, right? Anyway... The car disappears before he can get any details, plates, etc., and he thinks there is no point in calling the police with no details, so he carries on driving. Literally about four hours later, almost in London, yet another car pulls alongside him with the same woman, same Miss Trunchbull hair, same terrified expression. 
except this time she appears to be screaming at my dad through the window, so my dad pulls over into a lay-by and calls the police. Apparently, they have received three other calls about the same woman car in the same area in the last few minutes. It is unfortunately anticlimactic as he never heard anything more about it, but he didn't see her again, and although he kept an eye on the news, he didn't see anything about it. Hopefully, it's just a giant coincidence. Who knows? Account 14. The repeating nature of this one reminds me of one weird story back when I was in high school. It was summer and my dad's birthday, so we drove to a casino two hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It finishes, and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her we'll be home soon. The canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic. It's around midnight, so we enter the canyon and we're all pretty tired. To keep us talking, we start telling stories, most of them creepy stories. This goes on for a while and it feels like time is passing in a haze. We pass this butte in the canyon and suddenly I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking and then we pass the same butte again. This time I point it out and my dad and uncle notice the time it's 1 a.m. and we're still not home. So we all start to get a bit freaked out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention, though, time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon around 1.15 a.m. and call my mom, who is freaked out she hadn't heard from us. We still, to this day, have no idea where that extra 45 minutes or so went. Account 15. Around 2006, I was driving a flatbed, and I picked up a load of construction material in rural Tennessee. I remember it being somewhere between Memphis and Nashville, but closer to the intersection of the MS, AL, and TN state lines. A tarp was required for the load, so I strapped everything down, tarped it, and left the shipper. About five miles down the road, in the middle of nowhere on a two-lane road, I noticed my tarp flapping in the wind. I found a wide shoulder and pulled over to fix it. I realized I had done a poor job tarping the load and decided to redo it on the side of the road. I undid all the bungee straps, dragged the tarps off, rolled them back up, climbed up on the load, and started unrolling the tarps again. That's when I saw a guy walking down the same side of the road coming towards my truck. At first, I didn't think much of it other than to keep an eye on him since I was in the middle of nowhere. As I was climbing down to start hooking the bungee straps back on, the guy was getting close enough that I was paying more attention to him than to tarping my load. I grabbed my winch bar and set it on the trailer where I was working, just in case. An eight-pound solid metal bar about four feet long, tapered to a blunt point on one end and hollow on the other, used for tightening straps and chains. The first thing I noticed was his hair. It looked like a mullet but was patchy like he had tried to cut his own hair and given up. The next thing I noticed were his eyes, which I can only describe as off. They were clear, so he didn't seem drunk or high, but something wasn't right. His clothes were dirty and not well-maintained, and he had dirty white tennis shoes with no laces on one shoe, the tongue noticeably out of place. He stopped by me, waited until I acknowledged him, and then said, I've got a long walk. I replied, Yeah, man, you do. We're in the middle of nowhere, making it clear there was no ride to be had. He nodded, started walking by me, stopped at my truck's driver door, turned around, came back to me and repeated, I've got a long walk. I explained that I couldn't give him a ride due to insurance reasons and apologized for not being able to help him out. He seemed to accept this, turned around and left. I waited for him to get a little way away from my truck and then started working on finishing the tarp job, still keeping an eye on him. As I was putting on the last of the bungee straps, I looked over and saw he had turned around and was heading back towards me, now about 100 yards in front of my truck. It looked like he was talking on a cell phone, his hand up to his face, his other hand waving as if having a conversation with someone. I finished with the straps, grabbed my winch bar and climbed into my truck as he was about 10 yards away. As soon as I was in the cab, I locked the doors and set the winch bar on the passenger seat just in case. I looked at the guy and realized he wasn't talking on a phone. He was talking to his hand, and it didn't look like a pleasant chat. It looked like an angry conversation. I cranked the truck, put it in gear, and pulled out without looking for traffic. 
As I passed him, he just looked at me, still holding his hand to his face with a dead expression, staring at me. It gave me the creeps. About the time I hit fifth or sixth gear, I looked in the mirror and there was no one there. Ooh. Account one. Not a truck driver, but I have one weird story from when I was a kid. My parents always took us on long road trips every summer, and my dad liked to take meandering routes through rural towns to see all the tourist traps. One trip, we passed through a little town in Illinois, the kind you miss if you sneeze. This one had mannequins. Every house and business was only populated by mannequins. I don't remember seeing any people. Everything looked maintained and clean, so someone was at least caring for the place. There weren't any signs or anything indicating it was for tourists. Just a convenience store bait shop with a sign reading, Eat here, get worms. Account 2. This reminds me of my hometown, which is coincidentally also a small town in Illinois. About eight years ago, they installed about 20 mannequins throughout our downtown dressed like characters from A Christmas Carol. The mannequins line the street in winter and are supposed to give off a cheery vibe. However, their lackluster artistic stylings, coupled with nearly a decade of neglect, have created essentially a promenade of what looks like burn victims frozen in time with a never-ending expression of horror on their faces. Not many people walk around town in the winter, so the main inhabitants you see are these petrified mannequins with their beady eyes and deteriorating faces. Account 3. I was driving through eastern Washington on some state roads. There were no rest stops or cities, but I had done the route enough to know there were these massive dirt areas every 40 miles where you could park safely away from the road. I decided to call it a night and closed my blinds and lay down to watch something on my phone. After roughly an hour, I heard someone try to open the driver's side door. I hadn't heard any vehicles on the road the whole time I was parked, but I got up to peek out the curtains. As I was looking out into the blackness of the driver's side window, I heard them try the passenger side door. I peeked down from the top of the curtain but couldn't see anything, so I started the truck and turned on the lights. I was fairly freaked out at this point, so I still didn't open the curtains but peeked through gaps. Nothing. Nobody was standing near either of my doors or parked within sight. I took a deep breath and closed the sleeper curtains too because for some reason that was going to make things better, right? After lying back down and convincing myself that something blew against the truck and it only sounded like the doors, it was fairly windy outside and a lot of flat ground, I heard what sounded like someone trying to pry open the vents on the sleeper. The door handles started clicking again and the truck started shifting like someone was climbing on it. I hit the little alarm button in the sleeper, hoping to spook them off, but it did nothing but add to the noise of door handles, fingers tapping on windows and chassis, and the hiss of air coming out of the suspension. Then suddenly it stopped. A few moments where I could only hear myself breathing and my heart pounding before I heard another truck approach and then drive by. I spent the next few hours waiting for whatever it was to come back, but it never did. In the morning, I couldn't find any footprints or damage to my truck, but on every window were tiny human-looking handprints, like a toddler had licked their hand and stuck it to my window over and over. Account 4. Driving through a national park in the middle of the night, going through a slow stretch at about 30 km h, every so often I thought I saw something out the window beside me. Just a glimpse of movement. When I looked, though, I didn't catch it. Finally, on about the third time, I whipped my head around, and this time I recognized it as a huge black wolf following alongside my truck just off the highway. I only saw it for a few seconds before I had to focus back on the road, but it was absolutely lovely, yet unsettling. Account 5. Not long ago, I got lost in a national park that I was visiting for the first time. I was hiking and went too far in. Around 9 p.m., it was an abyss. Thankfully, it was a clear sky and bright full moon, which helped me figure out the landscape. I was using my phone's flashlight and was carrying a DSLR camera with an external flash. The phone died, so I had to use the camera's focus assist beam to light my path and strobe test the flash, hoping a ranger would see it and come pick me up. Anyways, as I was pointing the camera left and right, lighting my path to make sure I didn't step on a snake, all of a sudden, I saw two glowy eyes. I had never seen a wolf's eyes glowing in the dark before, and seeing this for the first time was just a whole new shit-my-pants category for me. I froze solid, thinking that this was it for me. 
Now someone somewhere told me that dogs can smell fear. So if you think and act like an alpha, they won't mess with you. So I thought maybe I should do the same and kept walking. For some reason, the wolf ignored me and I was like, I'm definitely gonna run into the pack, but thankfully didn't. Count six, not exactly creepy, but definitely terrifying. My father was a truck driver and he was driving through a smaller town in Northern California hauling tomatoes. Suddenly he got incredibly tired. Wasn't low on sleep or deprived at all, but ended up passing out at the wheel. The last thing he saw was the light of the town in front of him. He woke up about two hours later on the other side of town, perfectly parked on the side of the road. He swears something was looking out for him that night. Account 7. I used to drive a truck in northern Manitoba. There's a road in the northeast where you can drive for several hours and see very few vehicles. This road is quite flat and straight in stretches. Of course, this is deep in the bush. One day, I saw something cross the road in the distance. Very large, easily past the hood of my truck. But not long like a moose or elk. Just tall. It disappeared into the bush, and as I drove by the spot, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I heard days later a tow truck driver describing on the radio his encounter with a similar creature. Only he was much more clear he had spotted Bigfoot. This guy went to some length to explain he didn't want people thinking he was crazy. But he was sure of what he saw. I asked an aboriginal client of mine in a nearby community, and he said the elders spoke of them commonly the same way they spoke of the other animals. I don't know what I saw that day, but I'm certain it wasn't a bear, moose, deer, or elk. I just don't know what the hell it was. Account 8. Years ago, I read an answer on a thread about a guy who was riding with his truck driver father as a child. They were in the middle of nowhere and were coming up on a person lying in the road with no one else around, no cars, etc. His dad blew the horn and the person didn't move. He blew it again as he got closer and the person still didn't move. He told his son to put his head down and cover his eyes and he ran the person over. When they looked back, a bunch of people who were previously hiding were running out of the woods. The gist was that his dad knew it was a setup for a robbery or worse and wasn't chancing it with his child in the car. No clue if it was true or not. But I think about that story all the time. Account 9. My uncle was driving between Great Falls and Helena at around 3 a.m. He had his high beams on as it was a lonely drive and quiet highway. In the distance, he saw something cross the median and started to slow his approach, thinking it was a deer. As he got closer, he realized it was standing up, so he slowed down to about 30 miles per hour. He realized what it was and started to panic. A man in blue coveralls with a pig's head. Not a mask, but literally the head of a pig on his shoulder. My uncle moved to the left lane, and as he passed, pig head lunged at the truck. My uncle didn't stop to check if he'd grabbed on until he was in the safety of Helena. Nothing was out of the ordinary there. But on that stretch of road now, he doesn't slow down for anything. Account 10. The obligatory, not a truck driver, but a secondhand story I heard. My great uncle drove big trucks. Living in the middle of nowhere, sometimes people would leave trash on the road. Since he had a big truck, he'd just smash into the boxes or paper and continue on. One day, he was coming up on a cardboard box and had the urge to swerve and miss it. He missed it and passed by with no incident. Then looked in his rearview mirror to see the box. Out popped a kindergarten-aged little kid who just headed back to their house as if nothing happened. Account 11. Not a truck driver, but I've spent the past four years driving every day night for work. I was in a fairly rural part of Mississippi, somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood. Important note, it's all two-lane highway for the 250-mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife and told her there were high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats throughout the Delta. I said I'd call her as soon as I made it to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck, so I had eaten dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky without inclement weather. I had driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck. Being a Mississippi native, I knew in July hail meant tornado. I pulled off to the side, I was in the middle of nowhere, no lights to be seen, no cars behind or in front of me, and started looking for the storm tornado I believed was approaching. I rolled the passenger window down and shined a bright flashlight out into the night. Nothing there. 
I turned to the driver's side and this guy had his face pushed against the glass, grinning from ear to ear. I screamed and he was gone. I slammed the truck in drive and took off. We have running cameras on our trucks. I got to the first safe place to stop and called my wife. I didn't want to scare her, so I didn't mention the guy or the hailstorm. I did, however, pull the SD card and check the cameras. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. I've always played it off as my imagination. I will say I don't drive through the Delta in the dark anymore if I don't absolutely have to. Account 12. Okay, got one while I was actually driving a bus made out of a truck in the deserts of Central Australia. I was over 500 kilometers from the nearest town, so yeah, middle of nowhere stuff. I was on a five-day charter to pick up a bunch of aboriginal elder women to get their women's business health checks done. Pap smears and mammograms, etc., I believe. On the day I took them to get that done, we went via a place called Mintabi so they could shop in the clothing store that's randomly in this little opal mining area of South Australia. We left from there quite late to make the three-hour journey back to where we were all staying overnight. The next day, I'd take them back to their respective desert communities. The passengers all fell asleep as they'd had a very long day, as had I, but that's my job. Even the nurse who was traveling with us fell asleep. So there I was, all alone in the cab of the Mercedes truck-derived bus, my 30 passengers all sleeping in the darkness of the passenger pod behind the cab, and it was around 9 p.m. Up ahead in the distance, I saw a headlight coming towards me along the lonely desert dirt road. So I dipped my lights so the spotlights went off and adjusted to see only what low beam would show me. I drove down into a slight dip of a dry creek bed, expecting to see the car with only one headlight anytime shortly. It's not unusual to see a car with only one headlight out there, so I wasn't remotely bothered. As I came out of the dip, I put my spotlights and high beams back on, and there was no car, no nothing, just the empty dirt road. There was no dust in the air, and I could see a good distance in front of me and out to each side. There was nothing there, just the empty desert, the dirt road, and me alone in the cab. I kept the lights all on until we came to a stop about an hour later. I didn't see any cars or anything the rest of the journey. Before I let the passengers out, I asked if any of them saw the light, and they all went dead silent. After a short while, they started talking in their own language, Pitjantjat Jara and Yankunitjat Jara, hurriedly, and then they all got off the bus. A few minutes later, a couple of the ladies came up to me to ask me to tell them exactly what I saw without leaving anything out, and to describe exactly where I saw it. Now, I'm a big guy. I've lived on three continents. I've been a police officer, a teacher, a bus and coach driver, truck driver, all sorts of things. Let's just say I'm pretty skeptical, but I do have an open mind. I'm not scared by much in this world. After I told these ladies everything from start to finish and described in minute detail exactly where it happened, I took note of exactly how far out we were when it happened, the two ladies looked at me with the whites showing in their eyes. They looked spooked and said, and I'll never forget the way they said it, I got on great with the indigenous people of Central Australia and I trust that I know when something rattles them. They said this, Driver, we are so lucky that you did not stop, because if you did, no one would have seen any of us ever again. We'd all be gone. I asked why, and they just shook their heads and said not to talk about it because it had scared all the ladies. I'm sure many people have heard about the Min Min lights in western Queensland, but whatever these ladies knew about whatever I saw in our location, they were convinced it wasn't something you wanted to meet in the desert at night. I only ever saw this once. I only saw it for maybe a minute, and it just looked like a car headlight a couple of kilometers away up the road. But I'll tell you what, if the ladies that come from this area and whose people have survived in this desolate, remote part of the continent for 60,000 years are worried to the point of all being scared, I certainly don't want to mess with whatever it is. Account 13. I've seen some rather screwed up stuff over the years, from bad wrecks, drug addicts, panhandlers, and more. There used to be a small rest area in North Dakota on US-52, at the intersection of ND-30 near Sykeston. I came out of the building after using the facilities and got ready to leave. As I was starting to pull out, a guy opened his car door. The angle was just right to see that he was buck naked. Then he got out of his car and started walking around it. I'm not sure if he was a druggie or just thought, 
This is a good way to pick up a truck driver I've never met before. I just drove away and didn't look back. Maybe that isn't creepy in the sense that OP meant it, but I thought it was. One story that was creepy to me was when I was driving across Kansas on I-70 headed west. There is a pretty long stretch out there with just a couple of little towns and not much else. As the night wore on, I realized I had been passed several times by this beat-up old motorhome. Several people sat with their noses almost pressed to the window, watching me with creepy interest as they passed. Every time. I never noticed where I repassed them. A couple of times, I swear they passed me twice where there were no rest areas or exits to pull off at. I would have seen them stopped somewhere, but yet, here they were passing me again. They all looked like some variant of Charles Manson or another freaky type. I was pretty uptight by the time I got to the TA truck stop in Lyman and stopped for the night. Almost every driver I know has seen stuff late at night that just can't be explained. Maybe it's fatigue, or maybe not. But I've seen very large, man-like shadows cross the road way too fast for their size several times. I'm not saying it's a Bigfoot. I never got a clear view. It was always out at the end of the headlights, where I couldn't be entirely sure I even saw anything. But it sure looked like a large something crossing a whole road in just a couple of steps. Weird. Account 14. I live in Kansas and have driven that western stretch many times on my way to Colorado. It's absolutely nothing for so long, and the few tiny towns you do pass are mostly run-down nothings as well. I've never had to drive it in the dark, but I would easily get spooked. And for whatever reason, we seem to have a lot of people in this state who like to mess with you late at night on the interstate if you're the only two cars around. Three significant times, I remember one of those assholes would pass me, slow down in front of me until I had to pass them, then speed back up, stay beside me for too long, and then get back in front of me and repeat until we came across another car. They'd start it on them while I'd fly forward to get away. I had someone once follow me into the toll line, after doing what I just described for a half hour or so, when several other lanes were open and empty. I had a K-tag, and the worker waved me through. But I stopped and told her the vehicle behind me had been following me for miles, how they were passing and slowing down, and now followed me into this lane. She told me they didn't have a K-tag, so she would make sure to take her time in getting their money to give me time to get ahead. Well, they then backed up and went into another lane. She told me to sit and wait for them to drive on, turned on the red X so no other cars would come behind me. That other car waited about two minutes, just sitting there. The lady called the other worker in the stand and told them to get them out because they had been following me and were being really sketchy. They finally pulled off slowly and drove slowly down the highway. I sat at her toll for about five more minutes, got off on the very first exit, and went through town to get to a road that led to my home a few miles outside of town because I was afraid that car might have pulled over on the highway ahead to wait for me. This was around two in the morning. Fuck people who do that shit. It's extremely creepy and unsettling. Account 15. Driving home through what could be considered the outskirts of town, a young woman ran through the street waving at me and yelling something. She was wearing nothing but a t-shirt and panties. There are a lot of homeless people in that area and a lot of meth in my town, so I just kept going. It's fairly common for women to flag a car down and distract the driver while a bunch of guys scramble out of the bushes to mess you up and take your car. About a mile down the road, I realized she didn't really look homeless. I felt guilty for not stopping, and the ethical thing to do was risk the carjacking for the possibility the woman was in danger. Shitty people shouldn't turn everyone else into shitty people with fear. The woman was gone. I only passed one car when I flipped around. A blue 99 Toyota. There are no stores or houses, just sand, dirt, rocks, and brush. Later that night... It occurred to me that she might have been running from the man in the blue Toyota. I hope she was a carjacker. Count one. Not technically a truck driver, but I used to work as a field technician in the oil industry, so I spent a lot of time driving through remote areas of Canada at odd hours. One very strange and eerie experience sticks with me. I was in either northeast BC or northwest Alberta, can't remember the exact location, driving late at night when I noticed a very large black shape on the road in front of me. Thinking it was a moose, I stepped on the brakes, coming to a stop only a few feet from it. Despite being so close, and having my headlights shining directly on it, I still couldn't tell what I was looking at. 
It was vaguely the shape of a four-legged animal, but very big, probably about six feet tall. Aside from that, it was completely featureless. I couldn't make out any details whatsoever, no shine from its eyes, nothing. And then I noticed there were more of them in the ditch on both sides of the road. Five or six, or maybe more, all the same as the black shape on the road in front of me. None of them were moving. They didn't look like physical objects or living things. More like just large patches of absolute darkness. After I got over my shock, dread started to set in, and I drove around the thing on the road and sped off. I don't really believe this was a paranormal experience. I had been driving for eight plus hours through the middle of the night, and I was exhausted. Most likely, it was a hallucination caused by lack of sleep and spending too long staring straight ahead into the dark. But it was still a very unsettling experience. Account 2. I work for a railroad. Not necessarily remote, but sometimes it's just a conductor and engineer cruising along Placidus, 10 Melopouas, on very isolated, fairly wooded track. I've heard a few older guys mention something about a family, or a man with a suitcase, something along those lines, don't really remember, walking down the track with no concerns. Constant blowing of the horn, flashing of the lights, etc. They just kept walking down the track and then disappearing. Near Weatherly, PA, I also experienced a pretty intense trip myself one night coming home from New Jersey. I saw my first dead body lying along the rail, which in itself was kind of interesting. Then, the only other part of my trip where we were required to run at a slow speed, I heard the craziest blood-curdling scream I have ever heard in my entire life. One of the nights I will probably remember until I retire. Account 3. COVID was raging, and there was a truck stop, the only one around for a long while. I stopped there and parked, needing to pee badly. But the actual truck stop was closed with no available restrooms, and I had no empty bottles or anything to pee in, so I was desperate and tried to find a secluded spot. The best place I could find was in some bushes. As a man, my options are much more plentiful. Unfortunately, the spot would be visible to one trucker that was parked nearby, and I saw that he was awake in his cab in the daylight, so I thought it would be polite to approach him and say, I'm sorry, man. Their restrooms are closed, and I'm gonna go pee in those bushes right there. I wanted to let you know so I don't weird you out. He was an older guy and responded, No, man, you can just go between my tractor and trailer and pee there on the ground. No one can see you there. I chuckled and said, Thanks, sir, but if I'm going to do that, I'll just do it between my own tractor and trailer. And I started walking back to my truck. He called out, No, no, do it between my tractor and trailer. Something was really disturbing, though admittedly funny, about a guy insisting I pee between his truck and trailer. Account 4. I'm also not a truck driver, but I do drive five hours one way to work. My shift gets out at 11.30 p.m., so if I've got a second wind, I can usually make it the whole way home. Sometimes I have to stop to nap. So, I recall getting tired shortly before Binghamton, which is about 1.5 hours from where I work. This exit with a gas station I stop at frequently is about 15 minutes before Binghamton. Anyway, I stop, gas up, buy my snacks and smokes, and put up a sign in my window saying, I'm okay, I just have four more hours of driving to do, please don't knock. I've had that happen countless times, and if I'm really out, people think I'm dead and call the cops, then I have to convince the cops that I just worked 32 hours with about four hours of sleep, not nodding out on heroin or whatever. God bless the people for thinking they're helping, and I don't want them to stop, hence the note LOL, and I push the seat back to nap. I have an alarm set for 20 minutes. This is about 1 a.m. Next thing I know, it's 6.30 a.m., and I'm on some back road with houses, but also fields, and I'm driving super slowly. I have no idea where I am and how I came to be here. I don't have a lot of service bars, but I plug in my mom's address and hope directions pop up. It does, and it takes me to a highway entrance in Harpersville, NY. Okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm back on track. I don't recall how long before this story happened, but I had gotten into an accident falling asleep at the wheel, totaled my car, got a nice eyebrow scar and nosebleed, back more messed up than it had been, but otherwise okay. Got screwed by my insurance too. But then this happens and it scared the fuck out of me. Assuming I woke up to my alarm, it would have been like 1.30 a.m. And I came to about 6.30 a.m. What the hell was I doing for five hours? How did I not hit anything? Checked out the car. It was fine. How was I driving the speed limit? Because I imagine any faster or slower would have gotten the cops on me. Just how? 
or was I asleep the whole time but still slept, drove about 25 minutes until I really woke up. The terror allowed me to complete the drive. Account 5. Story handed down from my grandfather. In his youth, he was a lumberjack in rural Washington or Oregon, which according to him, was fairly uneventful save one incident. He and three others were taking a car to their residences late one night, technically morning, and he and the other guy in the back seat passed out while the passenger seat kept up a conversation to make sure the driver stayed alert. Sometime in the night, he and the other guy get woken up to the car screeching to a halt. Both the driver and passenger are staring out the window, swearing and pale-faced. All four get a good, long look at something really tall standing in the headlights down the road, black and wide. The driver did the fastest three-point turn my grandfather had ever seen and took a different route. They came to the consensus that this was probably a bear that got spooked by the car and tried to scare it off. Whatever it was, my grandpa proceeded to retell the story at every family get-together afterwards. So it's pretty burnt into my memory. Account 6. Reno NV. A place on the north side of town, way off the freeway towards an old military road. I got there early at like 1 a.m. They didn't open till 6 a.m. The facility was closed, so no one around and I just pulled into the lot and parked off to the side. I went to sleep and was woken shortly after to someone knocking on the door, window, firmly to the point the truck shook. I jumped out of bed thinking they were there already and wanted to offload me early. I got to the door and no one was there, so I stepped down thinking they were behind the trailer looking at the door seal or something. No one around, I looked under the truck and around, absolutely no one. No wind or bad weather, not another person around. I jumped in the truck and pulled out of there as fast as I could and went and parked in a nearby truck stop. Still can't explain it. I mean, I guess I can justify I could have imagined the sound, but the truck shaking was definitely real, so I don't know. Account 7. Not a trucker. But I had a college teammate from Miami who swears by a story to this day. He and his girlfriend were making the drive to Naples late at night on a two-lane road through the Everglades. They had been in a line of cars behind an 18-wheeler for several miles. She fell asleep, and he was searching for something to listen to on the radio. Only one station came in clearly enough to be tolerable, so he gave it a listen. The DJ came on and said something along the lines of, The stars are extra bright in the Everglades tonight. If you're driving through there, pull off and take a look. He said he normally wouldn't even think of it. But for some reason, he felt compelled that night. He woke up his girlfriend. She was annoyed and didn't want to. But he convinced her it would be worth it. They stopped and just took in the stars for five to ten minutes. He said it was the most amazing sky he'd ever seen. They got back on the road and drove a few more minutes before coming across a massive accident. The truck they had been following had jackknifed and taken out several vehicles that were following. He said there were multiple fatalities, but I've never been able to find a news story about it to confirm. It was probably around 2005. They most likely would have been involved if not for that random DJ on the only radio station that came in that night. Account 8. I'm not a truck driver, but the story is from a truck driver. I was working the overnight shift from Friday night into Saturday morning at a gas station. At about 6 a.m., a semi pulled into the fuel aisle. The driver got out and almost ran into the store, clearly shaken. His face was completely white, and he was obviously upset. My first thought was that the poor man had hit someone on the road. We get a lot of drunks walking across a four-lane highway in front of the store. So I asked what was wrong. He looked at me for a second and said, I'm not crazy. Now I'm thinking, great, I'm here all alone and this guy is losing it. I said, of course not. I just saw something huge on the side of the road. Like a deer or a bear? We had a bear get into the dumpster last week. No bigger than a bear on its back legs. Maybe a big person? It picked up a dead buck on the side of the road and carried it over its shoulder into the woods. I could only stare at him. My brain couldn't process this information so late in a shift. A local came up to the counter to get his usual, and the guy told him the story. The local said, that's the Bigfoot that lives near the county line. The truck driver and I looked at this guy like he had two heads. He had to be joking. The trucker paid for his fuel at record speed and left, never to be seen again. The local still insists it was Bigfoot. I just don't go into the woods because I don't know. 
Account 9. As a crew member of an off-road racing team in Baja, California, Mexico, I got to test drive some rigs and trucks, so technically I'm a truck driver. We were driving south along the Sea of Cortez with a buddy at night on this four-hour dirt road to Gonzaga, which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere in the desert. We saw the lights of a car behind us coming down fast and effectively tailing us. The bastard had bar-mounted headlights on top, or what seemed like it, which were super bright. It was normal, or was, for locals and gringos to get wasted in the nearest, now former due to COVID, spring breaker town, and then go down this road super fast to test their rigs since there's no police there. I tried waving him off to get the guy to keep his lights low since he was blinding us, but he didn't slow down or turn off his roof lights and it was a dangerous, super dark road. Finally, near a curve by the shore, I found a spot to bail off the road without crashing, and we saw lights passing by us super fast and going straight into the curve. We thought, that's it, he's going to crash into the sea, but the lights didn't fall. They kept going straight into the beach and the sea, then pitched up abruptly to the night sky and disappeared. We didn't say a word for a minute or so. And then my buddy asked, did you see it? I said, the flying truck? We didn't talk about it anymore, as it simply didn't make sense to discuss it or with anyone else when we arrived. Account 10. As a FedEx contractor, I was in one of those big box trucks. Anyway, I finished a long delivery day, and I swear on whatever gods you believe in that I was hearing voices in my cab. It wasn't the radio. It wasn't my tinnitus. It wasn't my subconscious. I was hearing whispered voices in my right ear that were coming from the passenger seat. The voices continued even after I had gotten back to my hub, clocked out and hopped in my own car to go home. They only stopped when I left the parking lot. It only happened that night. I still have no idea what it was because I had ruled everything else out. Account 11. My father has told me this story maybe a thousand times. My family along with a couple of uncles and my oldest cousin, went on a trip from Mexico City to Acapulco when I was barely a year old. On the way home in the middle of the night, ah, the good old days when you could travel at night, the car broke down, and a police car quickly came to our aid. There were three policemen in the car, and the chief offered to take my dad to the nearest gas station where he could find a mechanic. He told the other two officers to stay with our car, my dad says they seemed absolutely displeased with the order until the chief said, Don't worry, there's a woman and two children. That seemed to calm the two officers. While driving to the gas station in the police car, my dad asked the chief what that was all about. The chief told him that there had been many accidents in that part of the road, which is why they were able to find our car so quickly. All of the accidents involved young men traveling without female or child company. Those who had survived said they crashed because they saw a very beautiful woman next to the road, but once they got close to her, she turned out to be just a rotting corpse staring at them, and they crashed because they were paralyzed by fear. Account 12. I worked at the Nevada nuclear test site, decommissioning old buildings. How much time do you have? One of the creepiest days was when I was sent with an end-dump load of non-hazardous material to the general landfill which I had never been to before. Somehow I missed the turn and ended up at an armed gate with machine guns pointed at me. It was very uncomfortable. Once I explained my mistake, I was quite hastily turned around. Still not knowing exactly where my turn was, a very nondescript desert road was what I was looking for, I headed back. I turned onto the next dirt road I came to and ended up at the sedan crater. I went and smoked a cigarette on the observation deck all by my lonesome. My hands were still shaking from the encounter with the armed guards. Another creepy experience was when delivering a hazardous materials load to Area 25. They had begun using robots to guard the area. They were still in beta testing, and someone may have just been messing with me, but the robot perceived my truck as a threat and blocked my ability to move. I went inside the building, and 15 minutes later, it had moved on. Count 13. I've got a few. One of the scariest experiences was when I was parked at a dirt turnout in the Arizona desert between Cameron and Page for the night. This was out in Navajo country, I believe. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to scratching at the window of my sleeper. It went on for about 15 minutes. I was sitting there in the dark, scared to death, with my Bowie knife in hand, wondering what the heck was happening. After it stopped, 
I waited another 15 minutes before I opened my curtain and looked out the windows. I couldn't see anything outside and was still the only one parked there. The next morning, all I found were some footprints coming to the truck and eventually walking back into the desert. I haven't parked there since. I always stop at a small truck stop in Cameron now. Account 14. Not me. But my mom told me a story about one late night while trucking. Her husband was sleeping in the back, and she was starting to get super tired and struggling to stay awake. She heard another trucker on the CB and started chatting with him. He helped her stay awake for the run until she stopped off at a truck stop so her husband could take over. The next morning, she told her husband what happened, and he told her the CB was broken, making it impossible for anyone to be on the line. Account 15. This isn't a truck story, but moms do have some eerie tales to tell. I like to ask my mom about her side of the family, as I've never really met any of them. Most of them are gone or just not good people, I suppose. Anyway, she told me this story about receiving a phone call from her mom. My grandmother was telling my mom how much she missed her, how she wished she could see my brother being born, and just the sorts of things a mother would talk about. However, there was an existential dread over the conversation and feelings of lament. The conversation ended fairly abruptly with my grandmother saying it was time for her to say goodbye. After hanging up, my mom woke up and then realized her mom had been dead. She believes she was actually in contact with her. It's a chilling story and makes me wish I could have met my grandparents on my mom's side, but they had both passed away due to cancer before I was born. Which leads me to another story about a clock. I don't have all the details on this clock, but essentially, it would start winding counterclockwise when someone had passed. The clock would start turning counterclockwise from time to time, and they would get a little chuckle out of it, not really believing it was connected to someone's death. My grandmother had a hard fight against breast cancer, and sure enough, when she passed, the clock started turning counterclockwise. It gives me chills thinking about it. According to my mom, her dad got so upset with the clock that he threw it across the room and broke it. It's very strange, and I don't have all the details, but it certainly sparks the imagination. Account 1. Not me, but an ex-girlfriend's cousin's uncle. Yeah, I know it's a friend of a friend situation, but it was a well-known tale among the family. He was driving on a Mexican road at night. He felt a call of nature, so he parked on the sideway and jumped off the truck. He walked to relieve himself, and while doing that he felt a presence beside him. He pointed his flashlight at his side and saw, standing besides him, a small deformed person. It was naked and had both its head and face bloated, and he was standing just there. The driver, XGF's cousin's uncle, ran away to his truck, jumped in, and drove away from there. There's been a lot since I talked with my ex. We're cool but not too much in touch. But if you want to know more, I could ask her about the fuzzy details. Account 2. I used to live in Guadalajara, Jalisco, and once a year I'd make the drive up to the border to renew my residential permit or whatever, don't remember. Anyways, a lot of weird shit shows up on Mexican highways at night, from bridges that aren't there to shadows that cross the highway in front of you. One time I got stopped at a checkpoint in Sinaloa, and my truck was inspected by soldiers who were in those tunnels that ran under the floor of your car. Nothing happened, but imagine my surprise when I found out the Mexican army didn't have an official checkpoint in that area. Could have easily ended up dissolved in a barrel somewhere in MX. Point of story. Don't drive through Mexico at night. Unless you're part of a convoy and have a minigun mounted on top of your car. Account 3. Truck driving. Many years ago I did that. Long hours and always tired because the dispatcher always thought you were behind. But there were some good stories. This one guy, when he saw another company truck at a rest stop, and the driver was sleeping over the steering wheel, he would put on this gorilla mask he had and stand on the running board and knock on the window. Of course, the driver invariably almost suffered a heart attack, and a couple even chased him around threatening great bodily harm. I was sitting in my truck one day, waiting to load in a line of other trucks. One guy opens his door and stands on the running board like he is pissing off the side. Except he has this huge dildo in his hand. The next truck coming around the corner, the driver stared wide-eyed at this guy, who then proceeded to casually tap the huge penis against the hot exhaust pipe as if he is shaking off a couple of piss drops. The other driver almost hit the building. Account 4. My uncle is a truck driver in Guatemala. Small town with just a single road that passes through. I used to love sitting outside at night on the hammock, listening to his chilling stories. I'll start with the scariest ones. Can you see them? 
My uncle said he hired a guy from town to help him drive late shifts at night with him on the road. Story was, the guy had somehow managed to burn a house down as a kid and has since claimed to see the dead. Would occasionally swerve on the roads at nothing, or worse, my uncle said he would be sitting around when the guy would say, I see a little girl on the swing. My aunt confirmed it, said he would say things like that often. Apparently he learned to live with it or some scary third world shit. Two the cave. My uncle said one night he was sleeping above the trailer bed, when suddenly in the distance he could see a small light approaching. As it got closer, he had a chilling realization. He described seeing a really, really old, wrinkly woman who held a candle, draped in dark gowns. He said her nails were so long they curled. She walked into a cave opening and disappeared. My uncle said he noped out there real fast. Three, the horse. My uncle often likes to talk about spirits. He said one night while sleeping, a giant rabid horse tried to climb onto his truck. It would rock it back and forth, and the truck weighs an ungodly amount. He said when the rocking stopped, he jumped in and left. This is just the stories that I have from my uncle. I have also experienced paranormal stuff, and so has my family. Banging on the back windows with no one there, lights flashing at 3 a.m., and countless others. Guatemala is no joke, Lowell. Count five. A few years back, I was driving home after a shift. It was 3 or 4 a.m., and I was tired but not exhausted. It's a deserted state route in the middle of nowhere, and it's pretty common not to see a single car during the 30-mile trip. I drive this road multiple times a week. It's mostly open fields and some farmland through this 30-mile stretch. This particular night it was cold, but the sky was clear. Like no clouds or anything, and I actually love nights like this because you can see the stars so well without light pollution. Anyway, about halfway back home, I come over this hill to a two or three mile straight stretch. A huge dark object about the length of a pickup truck, but far rounder and thicker catches my attention as it's just hovering about 50 feet in the air, 50 or 60 feet off the road over a farm field. There's a very bright red light coming out of the side or bottom. I couldn't tell exactly where it originated from because it was so bright. As I was going about 50 mailer past it, I only had a few seconds to look at it, but the image is burned into my mind. I have no idea what it was. I wanted to turn around, but I was kind of freaked out. I'm sure alien life exists somewhere, but as for visiting our planet, I don't know. But if I ever had to paint a picture of what I think a UFO could look like, I'd paint whatever the fuck I saw that night. Unfortunately, I haven't seen anything odd over that area since that night. Count six. Not exactly relevant, but still creepy AF. My dad is a trucker, and about 20-some years ago, a woman committed suicide by running out in front of him. He said that every night around the time she died, the cab of his truck would drop a few degrees in temperature, and he felt a presence. He said this went on for a few weeks, and finally he spoke out to her and said he forgave her and wished that she had peace. He said he never experienced the eeriness again. Account 7. Not a truck driver, but years ago I was driving with my ex-girlfriend back from a wedding in northern Wisconsin, heading towards Madison where she lived. We were probably like 20 or 30 miles away from the city at that point, and it was probably around 1 a.m. My GPS, which was some really cheap brand that my dad got me as a gift from Radio Shack, had me going through some backcountry highways for some reason after I had stopped for gas, instead of getting me back on the expressway right away. I didn't mind. I kind of always found those really peaceful. Even though at night, they are pretty creepy. My girlfriend was asleep in passenger's seat, so I had turned down the music really quiet to not wake her, which added a bit to the eeriness of it all. I'm like really into this groove of driving, focused on the roads because it was so dark without streetlights everywhere. Then something on the side of the road catches my eye. It was a giant mountain lion with what appeared to be blood all over its face. I start shaking my girlfriend awake to get her to see it before it was gone. But she woke up too late. I pulled over to the side of the road and asked her to watch the rear view so she could see this huge thing cross the road, but it never did. She was convinced that I imagined it all because that area of Wisconsin is not known for mountain lions. But I swear I saw it. Account 8. I'm not a truck driver, and this isn't involving a truck, but here's my story. I was driving on a cross-country road trip through the middle of nowhere, Kansas, when I had one of my tires blow out. I pulled over and went to call DA, but I had no service on my phone. 
So I got out and started the process of trying to change the tire myself. After a very short while, a cop pulled up and asked if I needed help. I said, yes, thank you, officer, and he said, Cause you're in luck, I just so happen to know the best tow truck driver. He could take you into town and you could get all fixed up, no problem. The mosquitoes were eating me alive, and frankly, I only had a donut-style replacement tire and no clue how to properly change it. So I said yes, please, and the officer gave the tow truck a call. After another short while, the tow truck arrived and the officer left. The driver asked, where am I towing you to? So I was like, I'm not sure, to town, I guess. Somewhere where I can get my tire fixed. He said, well, you're in luck, because I know the guy at the only place that's open right now who can fix that for you. I said, okay, sounds good, and he towed us to the auto repair place. This was basically a ghost town, if you could even call it a town. The tow truck driver and the repair guy sat around and bullshitted for a couple of hours while my tire was being fixed. Bear in mind, there was nobody else there but me and my passengers. There was nobody else anywhere within sight. The town was empty except for the gas station connected to the repair place. Finally, they came out and said I was all set and gave me both my bills, one for the repair and one for the tow. $1,200 in total, for one tire and a five-mile tow. For a 1991 Grand Am, that wasn't even worth that much. I was furious but had no options, so I gave him my credit card and he was like, sorry guy, we're a cash-only kind of town, hey, hey. I was like, okay then. Well, I don't have any cash on me, so how are we going to settle this up then? And he was like, well, you're in luck, because there's an ATM next door at the gas station my buddy owns. So I went to the gas station and took out the maximum I could on three on four different cards, each with a $20 withdrawal fee. I looked behind the counter, and in addition to the gas station attendant, there stood the cop, the tow truck driver, and the repair guy all munching on Doritos and having a good laugh. I'm pretty sure I got hosed and potentially maybe even sabotaged. Looking back, that cop sure arrived really quickly and my other three tires were all still relatively new. I had to cut my trip short and invest in cortisone cream for the million mosquito bites. TLDR, Kansas ghost town folk drained me of $1,200 and I'm pretty sure they were highway pirates. Account 9. Not a truck driver, but was on the final leg of a 16-hour drive from Florida to northern Ohio with a caravan of about eight cars and half of us drivers, most of us up for 12-plus hours at this point and everyone else in the cars sound asleep, swear we saw a man walking his dog on the side of I-75 in the middle of nowhere between Cincinnati and Dayton at 3 a.m. To this day, still don't know if that was real or we were hallucinating. But either way, it was pretty creepy. Account 10. I posted this in another thread. Not a truck driver, but do a lot of driving for work, and I just like driving. Driving from Spokane, WA, to Omaha, NE, was cruising down Highway 212 in the middle of the night in southern Montana. About 2 a.m., I'm pulling through the only town, Lame Deer, MT maybe? I've tried to find it on a map since, but can't be certain, on that lonely stretch of highway. One stoplight town, and I get stopped at the only red light. Hadn't seen a vehicle on the road since I had hopped off I-90 about an hour prior, and there wasn't a single person outside in the town. Sitting at that red light, a loud siren alarm starts sounding. Loud enough that I don't see how any person in the town or within a few miles could have slept through it. It reminded me of the siren from the movie Silent Hill. I gunned it through the red light and away from that town as fast as my little four-cylinder Malibu would go. It may not seem that crazy, but just imagine the most haunting sound you've ever heard, in a place you've never been, several hours separated from seeing a person last. I'm sure there's an innocent explanation for the siren, but it still sends chills down my spine just thinking of it. Account 11. Not truck driving and not tired hallucinations. I had three friends helping me around midnight one night get a big toolbox into a storage unit before I could PCS to Texas. After I offered to take them to Waffle House for food as payment since it was about the only place open at the time. We left the unit around 2 a.m. and made our way to the Waffle House, driving through the Chickamauga battlefield in Georgia to get to it. The place is terrifying to drive through on a regular night, but my friend and I thought we would have some fun with the other two who didn't grow up in the area. 
They didn't know any of the ghost stories of the park, so we told them some while we were driving to kind of spook them a bit. Ghosts on the sides of the road, green eyes, the mysterious ghostly panther creature, the hill your car will roll up when off, rear view mirror ghosts, the works. We took a turn down a side road that leads to an old bridge that has the old stop and turn your engine off and it won't turn back on story. We get to the bridge, stop and turn off the engine, sit for a minute, start it up and kept driving with no problems. Nothing happened, just some harmless college kid fun. We drive over it and go around a corner and standing in a ditch is a black mass just larger than a man. It doesn't move really. And even though the headlights panned across it directly, none of us can tell what it is. It's just black. All four of us screamed and I gassed it out of there, nearly sliding in a ditch to get away. All of us saw it and none of us could explain what it was and still have no idea two years later. Account 12. Airline pilot here, that kind of counts. In the air, Probably the creepiest thing I've heard was the distress call of a small general aviation aircraft going down. This was around 2014 in the PNW. He had just blown a cylinder head and oil was shooting out all over his windshield. You could hear the panic in his voice as he radioed out that he couldn't see and was trying to report his position to a few airliners so that they could relay it to ATC. I checked the news that night and he actually died in the crash. It was a pretty eerie feeling that we heard the last words of a pilot fighting for his life while we were just cruising along above the clouds at 35,000 feet, completely powerless to do anything other than reach out to him over the radio. Account 13. Not a truck driver, but one night my friends and I were driving through a lightless valley around 1 a.m. Suddenly my headlights catch on an object in the middle of the road and I shit you not, it's a man made out of tumbleweed. We don't even have tumbleweed where I live. It appeared very suddenly and I was so confused by its shape that I didn't break or swerve. As we collided with it, my friend and I in the front seat both screamed. But nothing. No impact. We drove right through it, but it was just air. Both of my friends in the back seat were very confused why the two of us in the front screamed suddenly. So like, I know it wasn't just me. My friend saw it too. Account 14. Creepy bugger who lived on a ranch in the middle of nowhere wanted to show me his dope-ass man cave basement and wouldn't stop hitting on me while I'm just trying to deliver some damn stone. Thank fuck I had my winch bar and pepper spray. I literally dropped shit as fast I could because I already unstrapped and had my forklift down. Told the boss I'll never go back after. Only reason I didn't flat out run for it anyways was because I was driving a three-ton death machine and I didn't see a gun. My little forklift is quick. I'm a fucking tiny ass chick, and the company sent out a Jim Bro ripped co worker next. That dude got the same treatment from the creepy guy and thought he was gonna get kidnapped too. Ugh. In like three years doing this shit, that's the only time I've been worried like that. They stopped sending people after David came back scared too. Probably not the type of creepy op is looking for, but whatevs. Count 15. I was on a long haul eastbound. Nothing but me, the miles, and the night. On runs like this, I fall into a zone with the hum of the tires and vibration of the road coaxing me into a rhythm, not noticing details along the way. Illinois, Indiana, the long drag of Ohio, Pennsylvania. The miles rolled on. Slowly, I realized something had changed. I was seeing lights. The farther I went, the more there were. Suddenly, I jerked to attention with the realization what was happening. Oh, God, oh, fuck. I was in Philadelphia. Account 1 was driving from Chicago to Tampa to move with my dad. Somewhere in the middle of Georgia at 2 a.m., I'm mindlessly driving when my dad yells, yo, pay attention to the fucking red lights. Tons of cars ahead of us are stopped, smoke in the air. We slowly approach, and first thing we see is a little car completely engulfed in flames. Then all of a sudden, an 18-wheeler starts bouncing, like how some people put hydraulics in their little pimp cars. Big Boy was bouncing with flames coming out the back. I honked at the rubber neckers in front of me because I didn't want to see the explosion and there were already 12 cars pulled over. Too many cooks in the kitchen. The most surreal thing I had ever seen. Someone later told us it was the brake system. Looked like a demon-possessed truck. Account 2. I'd drive all over to different grocery stores. One route was all Walmarts in West Virginia. In between Charlestown and Beckley, I decided to do no tolls since I had no cash coins on me. The views are amazing, and I was just driving down these small roads mesmerized. I stopped off the road next to a creek to get out and take some pics. It was in the middle of the afternoon, BTW. 
As I'm looking up the stream, I see three tall, 15 feet white crosses on the other side. This struck me as very strange, and I instantly felt like I probably shouldn't be outside of my vehicle. It gave me a strong True Detective Season 1 vibe. As I'm processing this, two figures emerge from trees near the crosses. They were just a father and son and probably harmless, but I immediately noped right out of there and got in my truck and pulled away. Account 3. Well, nothing paranormal, but something out of a strange biology book. I was driving a person in my care from the clinic out of state back home. It started to rain and I was on a very rural road due to a detour and frogs were coming out onto the road in droves. The whole road was jumping and moving. The car started to slide around on the frog carcasses. I had to drive about 20 mph just to stay reliably on the road. I must have killed thousands of frogs that day. Account 4. Making the long drive back to our university one midnight, my friend and I both saw a freakishly huge dog or wolf-looking creature on the side of the road. Eyes glowing and everything. It had been quiet in my truck before this, but we both saw it at the same time and yelled out, we don't live in an area with wolves, so I've often thought about it. Our bet has always been some alpha dog or coyote that has grown huge in the woods, or a bear that we both just mistook for a canine. Very much looked like a canine, though. Account 5. Not a creepy one per se, but any time I haul through Navajo Nation in New Mexico, it's fucking terrifying. One night it's pitch black and there's an old man as aged as death walking along the right side and he stops and turns to hitchhike, but as I get closer, he's just staring at me and moving closer from the shoulder into the road. I have to swerve to the left not to kill him. Count six. Not my story, but my mom's. She used to drive long trips to Mississippi. One day she drove over the Mississippi River and saw some huge animal swimming in the water. She says it was almost as big as the trailer she was hauling. Account 7. This will get lost, but if someone gets to read it, then, hey, obligatory. This is my dad's story who's been a trucker for over 50 years. He tells us of these experiences when we ask. Otherwise, he doesn't really speak of them. One night, he was doing a long run. He knew he wouldn't make it home that night, so when he saw an old-looking pub up ahead, Ireland, he decided to park up for the night about 1.30 a.m. and get himself a nice pint. He went into the bar and thought everyone was dressed really old-fashioned and dancing. He thought nothing of it and got himself a Guinness. He still says to this day, it was the nicest pint he's ever had in his entire life. After he finished his pint, faces started to get fuzzy. He said it was like they were going out of focus. So he got back in the cab, pulled his curtains and done his crosswords until he fell asleep. The next morning when he woke up, he was going to get some breakfast and a coffee from the pub before he start driving again. He pulled his curtains and saw the pub from last night was derelict and boarded up, untouched for many years. He has no explanation for it, but he knows it wasn't a dream. My dad has many experiences like this one. If anyone wants to hear them, just let me know. Account 8. Last week, I was in the middle of nowhere in northern Alabama driving at night. Went over a small rise and see something on the side of the road between me and the next little hill. As I get closer, realize it's kind larger, so I edge myself slightly away from it in my lane in case it's a tree or something. Turns out to be a homeless dude on the side of the road wearing some kind of tan trench coat and a really gaunt look in his eyes. Like, he wanted me to hit him. It was creepy. Account 9. One time I was driving a big truck full of mailers to NYC from Atlanta in February. In the middle of the night, like 2 a.m., we are in the middle of nowhere. We are cruising and my girlfriend passenger suddenly sits up straight with a pull over now. So I'm like, what? She's like, now pull over right now. So I do. We sit there for a few minutes and I'm all WTF. And when she's like, I don't know. Okay, whatever. Let's just keep going. It was a feeling and intuition. So we pull back on the highway, crest the next hill, and before us is a huge accident with wheels still spinning on turned over cars, smoke fire. It just happened. No cops yet. We would have been in that many car wreck for certain if we hadn't pulled off. Lesson. Always trust your girl's intuition. Account 10. Not a truck driver, but I drive far for work sometimes. I once got a flat tire at 2 a.m. on a really remote back road up a mountain about an hour drive away from any houses or anything, without any reception or a jack to change the tire. Had to wait a half hour or so for a truck to go by, and I flagged them down with the light on my phone. Asked if he had a jack I could use to change my tire, and he said, I got a jack, but you ain't getting it. 
and he drove away before I could even say anything. Sometime later, someone stopped and helped. I genuinely thought I would die that day. Account 11. Not a truck driver, but a few years ago, I was driving back from Georgia to Arkansas. The trip usually means I cross into the northern part of Alabama, where I normally take a wee nap at this one rest area. I take my nap, go pee, and get a Red Bull from the vending machine. I get back in my car at 1.32 a.m. and start driving. The highway is completely deserted except for me. Found it weird, but shrugged it off. Next thing I know, it's nearing 6 a.m. and the sun's coming up. My gas tank was near empty. At the rest stop, I had 3-4 a tank. My odometer shows I've driven like 250 miles, but my GPS showed I was only about 10 miles from the rest area. I have no recollection of the time lost. Just poof, gone. Account 12. Only thing that's ever happened to me was during the last week at a major carrier before I began driving local. I was on edge because we had a strict no passenger policy due to insurance. And here's this female friend of mine who wants to become a truck driver. So I break the rules and take her out for five days to change her mind about driving. I left my home, headed towards my typical rest area right as I'm entering Illinois. I've driven this route many times, so I know where I need to stop for the night. My truck was governed at 62 MPH. I am almost done with my 11 hours of drive time, coming upon my rest stop in a few miles. Look at my Qualcomm, and it says I have an extra hour and a half to drive. There is no way possible. I'm driving west to east. It was not daylight savings time. Late August. So I decide to get closer to my destination, and I continue driving while we continue talking. An hour later, I notice that I still have an hour left of drive time. I am tired as hell. My friend is in the passenger seat trying to do the math for me. Time we left, brakes, etc. I finally said screw it and pulled into the next truck stop and called it a night. But I had been driving for 13 hours, and yet my timeline shown that I had only driven for 11 hours. By Thursday, two passenger vehicles had spun out right in front of me, wrecking into everything but my truck and one semi-truck stalled out in front of me going up a mountain pass. Great times, one crazy week. My friend decided to go into medical instead. Count 13. TLDR. The black dog. You see it once, take the warning and pull over. Don't get greedy, it'll take everything you have. Not a truck driver, but my dad has told me this story. He's not a trucker either, but he's done a lot of driving. Fortunately, he hasn't seen this creature either. There's this thing called the black dog. It shows up when people get greedy. When truckers or drivers in general have been driving for so long, haven't seen their family, etc., this thing shows up to take everything you've got. It shows up in the middle of the road, often on isolated and dark roads, typically when the person is close to falling asleep and they see it swerve to avoid hitting it, since they think it's a dog or some sort of animal, and often end up in a fatal one-vehicle accident. To anyone here who does driving a lot, don't push your hours. The money isn't worth it. You see this dog, or whatever form it may take, you pull over immediately and rest. You get one warning, sometimes not even that. If you ignore the first one, it'll get you the second time. Account 14. I'm a delivery driver for a florist. About two or three months ago, I had to deliver an arrangement about two hours' drive into the country from the city near the end of my shift. When I arrive at the address, I don't see any house but these old farming sheds and a really long dirt road. I get out of the truck, grab the arrangement, and walk down this dirt road. Sun is pretty much about to disappear, and I've walked about ten minutes and am questioning whether or not I should have braved driving the truck down. I finally see this old shack with a light on, so I walk up to it. I'm about to go to the front door when I hear from around the side of the house. Just leave it. I answer, does. Live here? I just leave it by the door. It will eventually get to them. I do so and walk as quick as I could back to the truck, lock it and drive away a bit quicker than normal. Account 15. My dad was a long haul trucker years back. He would drive from Ontario all over the U.S. The one creepy encounter I remember him mentioning was as he was passing through Florida, of course. He was driving through the Everglades late into the night, out in the middle of nowhere, no civilization for miles either way, when he notices a white figure come into the headlights or on the shoulder of the road. He slows down and there is a man completely naked coming out of the swamp. My father slows and stops in the road, thinking this guy may need help, as this man starts crossing over the road. He stops dead in front of the truck and stares at my dad. 
at which point my dad realizes this naked man is holding a shotgun. He stands there for a few seconds, staring, holding this gun, and then continues across and disappears back into the wilderness whence he came. So many questions. Count one, not a truck driver, but still a traveling in the middle of nowhere story. Many years ago, we were driving back to Southern California from a cabin stay in Northern California. These was a huge car accident on the freeway that was adding four hours to our drive. This was when tom-toms were at their peak and started to come standard with traffic avoiding redirections. Anyways, the tom-tom chimes up as the sun's going down and says it can save us three hours if we get off the freeway. Then it proceeds to lead us through the moonless night on rural roads surrounded by cornfields. I turn to my wife and say, I've seen this movie before, keep your eyes open. A few minutes later, there's a van on the side of the road with its hazard lights on, and normally I would stop and help, but no way. Not tonight, Satan. And for the next hour of driving, having no idea what was around us or where we were, it was one thing after another. Broken down cars with hazards on, having semis on either side of us making us hold our breath that they don't force us to stop. Too many of every horror film trope for a simple one-hour detour. Count two. My dad was a truck driver and I came along on short trips on weekends and the one day we're cruising along and we hear a helicopter. A minute later, there's an air convoy just flying above us about 400 feet up. But it wasn't just like two or three helicopters, it was like 30 or 40. I was really young, so military helicopters were really cool. Account three. Not a truck driver. However, I do have a somewhat creepy story. My friends and I were taking a road trip from Arizona to California. We decided we wanted to go before the sunrise, and we left about midnight. We were about three hours in, but my car needed gas, and the girls and I wanted to stop to toke up. We had a considerable amount of weed in the car, and we wanted to get rid of all of it before our drive back. So we start to roll a joint in this poorly lit gas station. We were just about to take a hit when this guy comes running up to my car and starts to pound on the driver's side window. I rolled it down just enough to talk to him, but not enough for him to force entry into my car. He seemed scared and shaken up, but something didn't seem right. He was sweaty, and I could tell he was looking inside my car for something. At first I thought he was an undercover cop, and my heart was racing. However, he said he had some car trouble and asked if we would take a look at it. At this point it was 3 a.m. I had all my doors locked and had not gotten gas yet. I knew nothing of cars, and neither did any of the ladies in the car. We told him this. I told him I could call a tow for him, although he persisted on using my phone. The other girls were freaking out, and of course I was too. I could see a payphone by the vending machine at the gas station and told him I would slip him a few quarters through the crack in my window so he could call whoever he would like. Out of nowhere, his tone changed. He got really calm and looked me dead in the eye. He told me to unlock the door. My eyes darted towards the direction of his car, and we could see two other males pacing while one male was sitting in the driver's seat. I noped the fuck right out of there, told him to go fuck himself, rolled up the window and hopped right back on the highway. I know for a fact, if we had gotten out of that car, we would have never been seen again. I called the police to report him and asked to be notified if there was an arrest made. I never heard back. Arizona is number one for sex trafficking. Be safe out there, ladies and gentlemen. Count four. Okay, here goes. While in high school, I used to hang out every Friday night a couple towns away with two friends. This was upstate NY in the mid-90s. The drive home was about 45 minutes up and through the mountains. There was one patch of road that had no houses or street lights for about five to ten minutes straight and always freaked me out a little seeing how dark it was. One night while I was driving this patch of road, my very worst fear occurred. The headlights from my car started to dim. Then I noticed not only the rest of the lights in the car dashboard starting to dim, but the entire car seemed to be running out of energy altogether. Before I knew it, the car started stalling and I had to pull over. I remember yelling, no, no, please, no, fuck! I was freaking the fuck out because this is how every alien abduction tale begins. When I finally stopped, it was pitch black. There was no light whatsoever except from the glare of the moon. I may not have been more scared in all my life. I gave it less than a minute and I just kept trying to turn the car back on by twisting the key. It worked like a charm and the car fully came back on and I was able to get the hell out of there. Never found out why it happened to begin with. Story 2. Yet another Friday along the same patch of lightless road. 
This time, as I was driving, I looked up into the sky to my right and saw something large but very far away, falling out of the sky completely engulfed in fire. I've never seen anything like it, and especially the trail of fire. It was a literal fireball. I watch as it passed the mountains and disappeared. It being after midnight and desolate out, I imagined I must have just seen a UFO crash. The next day I learned that pieces of the Russian space station were said to be falling to Earth after it lost orbit and it was abandoned. Account 5. I'm not necessarily a trucker, but I'm a commercial delivery driver in a rural area in Midwest U.S. Randomly one day as I'm leaving our home store, the radio just stopped working in the store. We thought nothing of it and I left to start the day and they just turned off the radio in the store and continued their day. I start the car and boom, radio not working. But it wasn't working on every single station. So I thought that was weird and decided to go back in the store and ask them to see if it was that way on their radio. Same thing. I go out to my personal car, no radio. I call my fiancé and best friend who are on the complete opposite side of the county where it's not rural, no radio. Call my mom, nothing on her end. Everyone I worked with called surrounding stores and customers and they had nothing. It was this weird blackout. So I finally ended up leaving for the day's deliveries. I left the radio on in the background even though it was static, just for some sort of noise. The volume was really low but out of nowhere a faint talking can be heard and it was going in and out. It was a language I did not recognize at all. And I honestly don't even know what to compare it to. And it sounded like a female computerized voice. Oddly though, my store's radio caught it as well, as they later told me they heard it too. After that, it was static again for a few hours. Then slowly, one by one, stations came back up. Now, this is so easy to probably have an explanation to, but the weirdest thing about it was that there was no media attention to it, and no radio station mentioned anything about the hours-long blackout. It was like it never happened. What freaks me out about this was the complete silence about it and how no one was given an explanation. Account 6. I don't remember the town, other than it was near Oklahoma-Kansas border. But we pulled into this town, and the place was deserted. Most of the buildings and homes looked like they were less than 20 years old, including schools. It's still one of the creepiest things I had ever seen. Later learned the town was host to a lead mine that structurally undermined the town. The truck was under the posted weight limit, and the water supply was contaminated, which is the reason it was deserted, but still creepy. Account 7. Not a truck driver. But I worked for a catering company once, and they had me drive the truck one morning at like 4.30 to deliver a shit ton of breakfast to some tech facility with engineers who do military contract stuff. Not a huge truck, but still a truck I had no business driving. The assholes didn't fill in the tank, so I had to pull over to get gas. I was the only person at the gas station, and this older white Cadillac with tinted windows pulled up. This older gentleman in a nice suite jumped out and came running at me and started screaming in a thick possible Trinidadian or Guyanese accent, Excuse me, sir, excuse me. I have a quick question to ask. I said, Sure, what's up? He replied, do you know where the dead people are? In got all bug-eyed, AMD said, I don't know, I don't know any dead people. He replied, heaven, hell, reincarnated? If you are unsure, you need to learn about Jehovah and his glory, brother. He then handed me a religious pamphlet that said, what to do when a loved one die, that shows a photo of a hysterical crying woman holding her hysterical crying son. He then said, read this to learn about death then walked back to his car. I sat there and thought, damn, that's a nice car and nice suit. Threw the pamphlet away and got a swisher suite at the store, then left to go to deliver the food to the catering place. Count eight. Not a truck driver myself, but I like to accompany my stepfather from time to time. This one time, we were on this curvy road of just trees, not a house, not even fences on the land behind the trees. As the hours pass, I start seeing a man white rubber boots, which were dirty, a vertically striped light blue button shirt, a blue cap, a cloth bag hanged from his right shoulder, and a long-ass machete hanging from his dusty jeans. I don't know why I remember him so clearly. For some reason, as we got closer and closer, he was just the same distance, I said, Hey, we should offer him a ride. It's an empty road far from any town. My stepdad looks over and says, Who? There's no one other than you and me. 
I said, there is, look over there in front, the man with the light blue shirt. This kept on for a few minutes back and forth until the man just disappeared, I said to myself, oh good, probably just my imagination. Until blood spots start appearing on the road, I decided not to tell my stepdad because I thought it probably was just an animal which got hurt, or my imagination playing with my boredom, but it never ended. And what made it worse is that when I asked to stop for a second to take a piss, the man appeared again. Only difference was, it was on the opposite direction. I said to myself, oh fuck's sake, not you again. I decided to not pay any attention to it and just carry on with my business. When I finished, the man was running towards me and kept getting closer and closer. I got scared and jumped hastily back inside the truck and told him to start moving because the man was coming. He laughed and told me I was crazy and that there's nobody. The blood stopped a few kilometers away and it never came to my mind after that until my mom told me about seeing the same man and the same blood trail on a similar road. It might not be as scary as some others in the post, but it really messes with your brain. Account 9. A friend of mine's husband is an OTR driver. He told me a story last year. In California, he decided to stop for the night in this diner parking lot. Wasn't much else around, but he thought a hot coffee would feel wonderful. So he hops off the truck, walks in. He's greeted by a beautiful lady named Jackie. She welcomes him, sits him down, and asks if he'd like some pancakes and coffee. He tells her he isn't hungry. She frowns and brings back some coffee and homemade pie. Tells him he needs to eat it. It's the most delicious thing he's ever tasted. Jackie sits down with him and talks for an hour. He realizes she's a special lady. An Elvis song comes on and he asks her to dance. After a couple of slow dances, she hands him a rose. He thanks her and she asks him to come back in before he leaves for a hot breakfast. He nods and heads out to his sleeper. Wakes up to pounding on the window. Sheriff is outside and asks him if he's doing all right. He says, yes, sir. They get to talking a little, and he tells the sheriff that he's leaving soon after he goes in to say his goodbyes to Jackie. Explains a little about how he really liked her. The sheriff stares at him bewildered and says, Jackie died three years ago. He motions to the diner that is run down and completely abandoned. Driver opens his truck and pulls out the rose he had left on the passenger seat. Sheriff takes a step back and tells him Jackie was known for putting fresh-cut roses on the tables. Apparently, three men broke into the diner late one night and murdered Jackie during a robbery. Driver had no idea about any of this. Account 10. Okay, so fuck New Jersey. Just kidding, mostly. So, I'm from Canada, and years ago I drove truck long haul for 5.5 years. Five years too long, I always say. Just wasn't for me. So after doing all the western continent driving, I decided to switch to the eastern group to get shorter runs. One night, I'm delivering a load of Nutella Tic Tacs and Ferrero Rocher to a warehouse in New Jersey. Can't remember the name of the town. I'm cruising along I-80 and just running out of steam. Normally, I would park at the delivery and sleep, then deliver, but I just couldn't do it that night. So I get into the last rest area before I have to get off the interstate and roll in. Now, there are some strange rest areas out there, and this is one of them that had parallel parking for trucks. It's actually not that hard, but it's odd to me. So there is one spot, and there's a car sitting in it. Luckily, dude seems nice and backs out of the spot. I think, fuck yeah, thanks, bro, and parallel park a big truck like I've been doing it since diapers. I got a piss, so I start putting my shoes on and get ready to hop out when the dude gets out of his car, walks up to the rear corner of the trailer in front of me, and just stares into my cab. Weird, but okay. I'll wait it out and do my logbook. He walks to the back of my truck and stands there. I lock the doors. Ain't about to be stabbed tonight. He then walks back up to the trailer and stares into the truck again. Well, I grab my phone and dial 911 like a teenage girl walking home alone at 2 a.m., thumb hovering over the send button. I also grabbed my hammer that I use for checking tires or beating potential murderers, just in case. He walks back to his car and gets in but doesn't leave. Fuck this shit! I am wide awake now, and I've forgotten that I've got an American-sized large coffee in my bladder, so I fire the rig up and take off like I'm late for my own wedding and get to my delivery an hour later. Like nothing, absolutely nothing happened, but it is still the creepiest thing I've ever experienced. Count 11. Hey, truck drivers. One of your kind forced me off the road in the middle of the night on I-5, in the middle of nowhere between SF and LA. Anyone who's made this drive 
can attest to the vast emptiness of the long stretch of farmland that surrounds I-5 between Stockton, Vernalis, and Los Angeles, and how empty the road would be past midnight two-lane highway, middle of night. Nobody on the road for hours but myself. I'm driving in the right lane and eventually a semi with an open flatbed carrying a load of enormous industrial piping appears ahead of me. Speed limit on this stretch was 65 mepper for trucks, 75 or 80 mepper for passenger vehicles. I signal, get in the left lane and pass the truck. I get some distance on him, but I stay in the left lane because I don't want the trucker to think I've cut him off. Also, it's the middle of the night and the road is otherwise completely empty, so why not just stay in the left lane till the truck disappears behind me? After a minute or so, I check my mirrors and see that I'm no longer gaining any ground on the truck. I'm maintaining a speed of about 80 Mavaramba, so he clearly started accelerating after I passed him. Well, he kept accelerating and gaining ground on me. Must have been going 100 plus miles per hour. And as soon as the cab of his truck was parallel with the front of my car, he started drifting into my lane without signaling. There wasn't a full-sized shoulder on the left side, so I was run completely off the road and into a dirt field. I near drove right into a giant wooden electric line pole and I would have been killed if I hadn't reacted as fast as I did. Thankfully, my Jeep was able to handle it and I was able to continue my journey after watching the trucker speed off at 100 plus miles per hour. Again, no other cars or trucks on the road. No logical reason that I can fathom for his behavior. So truckers, why did this guy decide to run me off the road and nearly kill me? Account 12. I was on an on-ramp on 55 in Mississippi taking a 30 and resting my eyes at about 0230 or so. My eyes lit up like a light was shining in them and I didn't pay much attention until I realized that someone would have to be pointed in the wrong direction to bright light me. I opened my eyes and nothing was in front of me, but the woods to my right were lit up in a near blinding white light. I couldn't see a source because the trees weren't casting shadows. I don't know if the truck was actually shaking or I was just scared. I punched the brakes and jammed it into gear and left. I was 20 minutes late because I had to stop and take another break, but I told dispatch a trooper told me I had to move off the ramp or something like that. It's really the only thing I've seen that's unexplainable except for a random guy on US 79 in Tennessee pulling a wheeled suitcase down the shoulder at the same time for four nights in a row. Account 13. I got stuck in between two remote towns in the middle of the mountains at night during winter. This was in northern BC in Canada. It was about 10 p.m. at night and I couldn't make it up a hill in the snow. No cell phone reception and I am out on the side of the road in pitch black using my cell phone as a light while I put the chains on. Got them on and still couldn't get up the hill. Waited for a snow plow to drive by and followed him up the hill and still couldn't make it. Finally, I had to give up and drive back into the town I had passed about 45 minutes back behind me and stay in a hotel. It felt creepy AF putting those chains on in the snow and pitch black. I was so angry at my dispatch for even forcing me to make it back when they did as I knew it would be tough in the snow. Things could have been so much worse than they ended up being. Account 14. Okay, so I was at one point a truck driver, but this didn't happen to me or to someone driving a truck, but it did happen at night on the road. So my friend was in a car with his three friends driving out on Long Island somewhere. They had been out at a bar or something until it closed and were heading home. The driver notices they are being followed by another car. Everyone is like, nah, you're crazy. He pulls off at the next exit. The car follows. He proceeds right back onto the highway, parkway, expressway, whatever, and the other car still follows. Okay, now everyone is losing their shit. It's not a cop car, and it looks like there are four guys in that car too. For whatever reason, my friends have one of those 30,000 candle power flashlights, so they decide to light these guys up. They aim out the back window and switch it on. In the car behind them are four dudes with Jason Voorhees hockey masks on. My friends scream. The now blinded hockey mask dudes scream and pull over. My friends got away. Account 15. I am currently a truck driver, and this happened maybe a year or so ago. It was nothing paranormal. Just a bad case of sleep paralysis, but it really left me shook that night. I was on my way to Arizona on the I-10 and had just ran out of drive time, so I stopped at a truck stop on the Cali AZ border in Blythe, CA. I parked my truck in a parking spot right under a street lamp and went into the sleeper, closed my curtains and watched some videos on my phone before I went to sleep. Next thing I know, I awake and everything seems normal. 
I could even see a little streak of light coming through the curtains. But I then hear someone jingling their keys and use them to open up my truck. I even felt the person sit in the driver's seat, and I could hear the air releasing from the chair from the weight. I became confused and alarmed and tried to get up to see what's going on, but my body won't move. I tried to yell out to the person, but I can't say anything either. I then hear this person turn on the truck and can even hear the crackling of the radio and the weird voice of the weather channel that my truck always defaults to when turned on. The scary part that made me panic, though, is I started to feel the truck move. I felt the truck move forward and the long arch a truck would normally take to clear the trucks parked around it. At this point, I started struggling, trying to move and trying to say something, but I still can't move or talk. I'm panicking, and then all of a sudden I get control of my body and I jump up and rip the curtains open, and to my surprise, no one is there. I am still parked in the same parking spot, my truck is still locked, and everything is turned off. I tried to tell myself maybe it was the truck next to me, but I look outside and the same trucks are parked around me. I then come to the conclusion that it was most likely sleep paralysis. This wasn't the first or last time I get sleep paralysis, but this was the most vivid one I have ever had. Also made worse by the fact I was by myself in a truck in the middle of nowhere. There were so many details that made me think it was real. It's fascinating how the mind recreates every small detail that I would normally glance over. Sorry if the story isn't too clear. Writing isn't my strong suit. Account 1. Not a driver, yet thinking about it as a career change, used to manage in a large retail store. One morning we had an early morning meeting. A neighboring parking lot had an auto transport with the cab engulfed in flames. Drivers don't normally sleep there, but will park and go to their homes nearby. I park and decide to be noisy and watch from the distance. Firefighters weren't there yet, and after about 10 cc with no sirens, I call 911. No one had called yet. Operator asked if driver was inside, and I said, I don't think so, but if they are, they're dead from smoke or fire. Right then, the driver in only his tidy whiteies comes around the back, clearly distraught. It was winter, so I rushed him inside so he could warm up and watch from the windows. I asked his sizes and had an overnight stalker grab him clothes and shoes. His stuff was clearly toast. Account 2. My friend drove for a few years a while back. He told me he was driving a rig very late at night in Utah, driving on a lesser-used two-lane highway. He said he remembers feeling very alert that night. So he noticed what appeared to be a figure manifesting up ahead on the dark road. Told me it wasn't on the road, but just next to it. He then comes to a stop and grabs his heavy-duty flashlight and points it at the figure. He then describes it. Apparently this humanoid creature had a dead coyote it was eating, and the truck had gotten its attention and pissed it off. So it sort of stands up so he can get a full view of the thing. It was guant, with very big eyes and of course the coyote blood all over its face. Its height was about 6'2", it had skinny limbs, no clothing. He then describes how it started to shuffle slowly towards the truck. Not only does he not have a weapon at that time, the only usable weapon being his flashlight is actively helping him view this creature. He decides to book it and leave. Had no problem passing it. Turned around to see it standing in the middle of the road on two legs as he drove away. When he reaches the nearest rest stop, he sees two other truckers talking. Apparently, my friend wasn't the only one to see the thing. Both the two guys looked as horrified as he was. As for my opinion on my friend's encounter, I have to say my friend isn't one to lie. So his story had me intrigued. I told him maybe what he saw was some mentally ill person out there. But he brushed the idea off saying he knew what he saw wasn't human. I'm not the superstitious type, but his story really did creep me out. Account 3 I used to do music back in the 80s and 90s as part of the sound and setup crew. This entailed many late-night drives in the equipment truck through some very isolated sections of our state after the show to get home. One night, me and my pal were driving through a dark, desolate, swampy area on a two-lane highway around 2 in the morning. Out of nowhere, we noticed a car that had driven off the road and into the woods. All that was visible were headlights shining on trees and red taillights. Not really knowing what to do, we drove past, but then realized that it, the car in the woods, could have been the result of an accident of some sort. So we were compelled to turn around to check it out in case someone needed help. This situation really creeped me out since I knew I could potentially witness some sort of gruesome accident. And I remember forcing myself out of the truck to reluctantly inspect the situation. Upon arriving where the car was, I walked into the woods to the scene. 
The car door was open and key alarm beeping. Ding, ding, ding. The headlights still on, but no one to be seen anywhere. No blood, broken glass. My only guess is the car belonged to a drunk driver who drove off the road into the woods and left the scene. I still wonder what happened there that night, but can only assume it was just an abandoned car after the survivor had too much fun. Count four, not a trucker. Many years ago, I was driving south on a freeway in the middle of Utah. I haven't seen another car coming or going for miles, even though it's the middle of the day. Then I see a semi ahead in the right lane of this two-lane southbound freeway. I'm gaining on him in my lovely red sports car, so I pull into the left lane to pass. I was slightly over the speed limit to pass him quickly. He was doing slightly under the limit. There is no shoulder, because it's some kind of bridge or culvert crossing. Remember, no other cars anywhere around. Just as I reach the hallway point on the semi, he starts changing lanes for no reason into my lane. I have nowhere to go because there is no shoulder and I am going to die. Time slowed. The world blurred. Somehow I floored it in time and my wonderful car flung me forward and ahead of death. He was fully in my lane when I looked in the rear view mirror. I have no doubt that he tried to kill me. It was clear, sunny, and he had nothing in front of him that would cause him to change lanes. There were no curves to hide my very red car as I overtook him. He could easily see me coming on the long straight away. There was absolutely no reason for him to change lanes right as I was passing him. This part of the freeway was always isolated back in the day. There were no cars near us, no animals, and I saw no car for the next few miles as I raced away from him. If he tapped my car or if I overreacted, it probably would have looked like an unfortunate accident. Count five. I used to team drive with my buddy OTR and he was night blind, so I got the night shift. It was about 3 a.m. and we were driving through Central OR and I had two trailer tires blow. So I pulled off the side of the road right near an exit for Dead Man's Pass. I woke my buddy up, we inspected the blowout and started getting a hold of somewhere to come fix the tire. While waiting for a callback, we both noticed an eerie light coming from the edge of the woods off the highway about 40 yards away in front of our truck. Mind you, it is an extremely remote area in which we had not seen a town or light in probably two or three hours, and hadn't even seen another vehicle for an hour or so. We had some time to kill, so we started to walk up and see what was causing the light. We got about ten yards away from the source to discover that it was a goat hanging upside, suspended from two trees with Christmas lights wrapped around it and lit up. We did not know if it was a real goat or fake, how the Christmas lights were powered up. We immediately ran back to the truck and drove the blown tires 70 miles to the nearest truck stop and were not going to stick around and find out the answer to those questions. Account 6. I'll chime in, I have two stories. Not a truck driver, but a rural sheriff's deputy in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. We had two of us who patrolled almost 500 miles of road and it wasn't uncommon for weird shit to happen. These are the ones that I still can't explain. On patrol one night around 2 a.m., going down a pitch black, no moon, country road, I'm traveling about 60-ish miles an hour, and I come to a set of small rolling hills. I go down the first hill, back up, back down, and as I get to the bottom, there is a person right in front of my car. It looked like an old woman in a white gown. I know it sounds like every scary movie, but this is what happened, and I knew I was going to hit her. I locked up the brakes, and she was dead center of my cruiser about 10 15 ifed out. I braced for impact, and I guess I locked up the brakes so hard I that old Crown Vic the car fishtailed at the last minute. She passed right beside my door and window. I could have reached out and grabbed her. Of course it all happened so fast it was a blur, no features on the person. I stop. Thank God I didn't kill some poor old woman who wandered out of her house, and you guessed it, she was gone. And to top it off, this was right next to an old church and cemetery. I looked and looked and yelled and never saw the woman again. Eventually, I got creeped out and just left. I have no idea what the hell happened. There are no houses within miles of this church and cemetery. Second story, a few years later or before I can't remember at this point, it was decades ago. Same part of the county, not that far away actually, just a few miles down that same exact road. Similar time of night on patrol and I am coming up to a giant straight stretch of the road that contained a four-way intersection. I see headlights approaching me and I slow down, come to a stop at the intersection. I realize after a few seconds the headlights are just sitting in the roadway about 100-150 yards away. Strange, but not the weirdest thing it could be a drunk. 
I start driving up to see what's happening and the headlights go out. So I stop for a second and wonder WTF is happening. The lights come back on. I sit there for a second and both lights elevate about 10, 12 eft off the ground and then come together to form a single bright light. At this point, I'm starting to feel my skin crawl. The light immediately goes out. I turn all of my lights on and go down the road and try to figure out what it is I just saw. I came across nothing. No cars, farming equipment, nothing. There's no way whatever was in that road could have gotten around me or turned around and left without me seeing them. To this day, I have no clue what those lights were. Account 7. Back when my dad as a freight train driver, he had to stop at a red light in a wooded area in the middle of nowhere. The guard of the train, who's usually at the back of the train, radioed to tell him that it's going to take a while, so dad got off his cabin to take a leak. As he was watering the bushes, he saw a relatively well-dressed man approaching, approaching him and he asked my dad to give him a lift to the nearest station. This man had a backpack and for some reason an axe. Dad decided to give him a lift and asked him to take a seat in the cabin. All throughout the two-hour journey to the next station, the man didn't put down his backpack or his axe. He was eyeing him constantly through the corner of the eye and read a manic expression that you absolutely don't get from a lumberjack who had gotten off work 2 a.m. After dropping off the man, the guard and my dad notified the cops and gave them the man's description. A month or so later, the department was issued a notice to not give lifts to strangers, as the man they had picked up was a gang member and had just shot a man and buried him in pieces in that general vicinity. Account 8. Do you want the one about hallucinating rabbits or the UFO? Boo! Got up this morning and found this had exploded. Let me get woke and some breakfast and update. P.S. Thanks for the interest. Update. Hallucinating rabbits. I had just started my career as a professional driver and I was going through my OJT. My trainer said I was somewhere in the southwest U.S. In the middle of the night, I'm driving and he's in the bunk. I have never been able to sleep in a moving vehicle and I hadn't gotten good sleep for three to four weeks. It's a dark, lonely, two-lane U.S. highway. Then I see a rabbit run out into the road and I run over it. Kind of sad. Then about 200 feet later, I see another. And a few hundred feet later, I run over two more. I have heard about population explosions of mice, rats, and jackrabbits around the world. And I wasn't stupid enough to put my life or the life of my trainer or the equipment in danger trying to avoid hitting rabbits. And over the next half hour or so, I saw hundreds of rabbits run out and get run over by my truck. My trainer didn't allow smoking in the sleeper, so he came out and sat in the passenger seat for a smoke. I started telling him about all the rabbits, and I said, There's one, there's another, and two more. He looks at me and says, Dude, there's nothing out there. I immediately realized that I was hallucinating from lack of sleep. So I grabbed some brakes, downshifted, and pulled over onto a wide spot on the side of the road. I shut the truck down and grabbed my logbook and started closing it out. He's telling me we can't stop because we'll be late to the delivery. I very calmly told him that I was hallucinating, and now he knows that too. I tell him that I'm not jeopardizing my life, his life, or the equipment, and that I'm going to bed. Sometime later, I wake to him getting the truck down the road to the delivery. In the morning, I'm supervising the unloading and he disappears. He comes back and tells me to go call the driver manager. The DM just asks what happened, and I tell him. He basically says that I did the right thing, but I completed my OJT and have been a successful truck driver for 21 years now. Update, UFO incident. I was a new driver still going through OJT. I don't remember if this took place before or after the hallucinating rabbit story. I suspect before. But my trainer and I were going through the southwest U.S. and we see a sign for Roswell NM, site of the famous UFO incident. We start talking about UFOs like guys do. We are both relating our beliefs and experiences. I saw an unidentified flying object when I was in the Army with ten other guys. I'm driving, my trainer is in the passenger seat. I look out my window and see a cigar-shaped light following along beside us. Couldn't tell how far away. My heart skipped several beats, my breathing froze, and my stomach was threatening to erupt out of my throat. I couldn't speak, but had to get my trainer's attention to show him the UFO. I looked to the right and started to frantically wave and point when I noticed he had his reading light on. It was square, but at this angle it looked cigar-shaped. Boy, did I feel silly. I finally regained my senses and told him what I thought I saw. We both had a good laugh. I hope y'all enjoyed. Count 9. 
A friend of mine is a truck delivery driver for a small alcohol and tobacco place near where he lives. Recently, he and I were talking on a Discord call, and he sounded like he'd had a rough day. When I asked him what's wrong, he told me about the weirdest shit he'd ever had happen I will now share. My friend I will call Ron. Ron pulled up for a routine stop on a highway truck stop. They had a full order of cigarettes and tobacco products only. When he pulled into the spot, he noticed this little tiny Sunoco at the rest stop, and the attendant was not inside. And I have to preface, this was a tiny fucking store, maybe about the size to fit one attendant and one person to check out, and the bathroom was outside the store. Ron walked up in the store with paperwork to sign off, and as the door opened, the bell rung for the attendant and an old man with no top hair but long sides came out with his titties out, no pants, and a yellow condom on and proclaimed, You're not the banana girl on Tinder, are you? Account 10. Not a trucker, but had to drive home from D.C. to Nowhere K.S. after getting off active duty. I didn't have anything but my car, some clothes, and my late grandpa's old service revolver to my name. Couldn't leave base until 5 p.m., which put me in West Virginia after dark. My GPS decided to transfer me between highways via a few back roads. In the meantime, it just quits working. No cell phone, no GPS, and it's dark in the boonies. Figured I'd call it a night and find my way out from my atlas in the morning. I pull off the road path, lock my doors, put up sunshades on my windows and get some sleep. It was a nice hatchback sleeper setup, MHO. I was just starting to doze off when I hear footsteps on gravel. I perk up, and it's definitely something on two legs, and it's definitely getting closer. So I fumble to get my sidearm without looking while trying to peek through the shade to see anything. Black, I can't see a damn thing. All the wildlife is silent, and I can hear footsteps circling the car. Back passenger handle pulled, front driver, driver rear. Hatch. Silence. I'm hoping they'll think it's abandoned and fuck off. I pull back the hammer on the revolver, and as soon as it clicks, there's a pounding on the hatch glass. I rip the sunshade down and see a man in an open plaid shirt just going to town on my window with his fists and eyes that I've only seen on a rabbit right before slaughter. We lock eyes and he just starts screaming. Not even words, just straight up screaming. So I scream back that I'll blow his head off if he doesn't fuck off. He takes off to the rear of the car. I catch my breath, climb into the driver's seat, and start the car to get the fuck out of there. Suddenly, my window just fucking explodes into nothing. Later learned that broken spark plugs will do that. And he's reaches in the car, yanks me out the window. Terrified, I fall awkward as shit as I clear the window, so I'm on the ground. He's kicking the shit out of me, and I'm scrambling trying to find the gun I dropped in the commotion. Seemingly out of nowhere, this random middle-aged guy comes charging out of the woods and decks the fucker. They tussle a bit. I find the gun under the car. Crazy guy one fucks off, and I draw down on crazy two. He puts his hands up, asking me not to shoot, and generally being rational. I asked what he was doing out here, and he said, Well, I'm not here to fuck spiders. Then explained he's out here on vacation in a cabin, heard screaming, and came to help. I thanked him and got the fuck out of there, found a Walmart a few towns over and slept under a street lamp. Called my dad the next day to tell him I'd be late because I had to replace a window and explained what happened. When he heard the spider thing, he laughed and made a joke about his dad always saying that because he had a bunch of Australian pilot buddies. Apparently it means like, the fuck does it look like I'm doing? Now my grandpa died before I was born. And I'd actually never seen a photo of him aside from a service photo when he was about 20. So I get home, and I go to put Grandpa's gun back in Dad's lockbox. I almost shit my pants when I see a photo inside of my dad with the dude that saved me, down to the clothes. I flip it over, and it's got my dad and Grandpa's names on it in 1990 on it. So I ask my dad when that picture was, and he says it's special because that was taken the morning of Grandpa's accident. I'm not saying I believe in ghosts but it's a real fucked up coincidence that the guy who saved me from a tweaker is a dead ringer for the guy whose gun I was trying to grab to protect me. T-L-D-R. I think the ghost of my dead grandpa beat a tweaker's ass after they broke into my car. Count 11. My dad knows a lot of truck drivers that would do the routes in Mexico. Dangerous and such cause of theft in certain areas. His friend talked about him driving from Sonora to, if I remember correctly, to Colima. There are some dangerous roads on those mountain passes, but as soon as you clear it, it's smooth sailing. He said before he got to the pass, he stopped to get snacks and a few drinks. 
He said he was maybe 10 hours or so done so he could take his vacation. As he was hoping into the truck, a young lady asked if he could take her just up the road to her home where her family was waiting for her. He says yes, and he drives about an hour and drops her off at this large hacienda. She thanks him, kisses him, and tells him I will be here waiting for you when you come back and to be careful on the mountain trails as they are very dangerous. He hugs her and says he will return for a beauty like her and kisses her back. After a slow and steady pace, he clears the mountain's delivers and starts the trip back to Baja. He stops at that hacienda in the middle of the day and asks about the girl. The old gentleman says, what does she look like? The man gets a sad expression on his face and says that was my daughter. She died on those mountain passes when her bus went over the side. Needless to say, it scared the hell out of him because he said that the kiss was very cold, but he assumed it was the air. After 17 years of driving, he retired and lives in Texas now. Account 12. I'm a trucker. And the creepiest thing to happen to me was a guy at the side of the road waited until I was real close and ran out in front of me and stopped in the middle of the lane expecting to get run over. Luckily, I didn't have a load on and had fast reflexes and swerved around him, barely missing him by inches. I watched in my mirror and traffic behind me was dodging him as well. He was definitely trying hard to die that day. I reported him to the police but didn't hear whatever came of him. Account 13. Years ago, Dad took Mum, me, and my sister on one of his interstate routes and made it a camping trip where we would set up a tent each night. One night we stopped in the middle of nowhere and set up. During the middle of the night, Mum really needed to pee but was worried as she could hear strange noises. She woke us all up and all we could hear was what sounded like heaps of people walking around us. This was super freaky as we were hours from a big town. Dad ended up grabbing a cricket bat and a torch freaking out that stuff was about to go down. He opened up, the tent flap ready to defend us, and we were surrounded by cows. There were hundreds of them. Apparently the area we were in was known for faceless grazing where the cows could go where they please. Mom just hung on for the night, ha ha. This is in Australia BTW, from memory it was Northern Territory. Account 14. This isn't a story, but thank you, OP, for asking the question. And thank you, Redditors, for sharing. It's been a stressful, sleepless night, and it's nice to be able to finally unwind with some soft core horror. I'm always looking for new material. Account 15. Not a trucker, but this happened on a road trip with my ex, GF, and I've always wanted to tell this story. We were headed to Eureka, CA from Oregon, and had to go on this highway 299. We had a late start to our day, so it was nighttime by the time we set out on 299, thinking it would be just a normal stretch of rainy highway. We were thoroughly unprepared for how twisty and isolated it was. Midnight came and it'd been pouring rain. GF was dodging rockfall for the entire drive so far. She was absolutely drained. We found a flat place to pull over for a quick nap, like a little outcrop of dirt alongside the road. The rain had stopped, but it was muddy, and man was it quiet, eerily so. We were both so drained we just crashed for about 30 minutes or so in our respective seats. Keep in mind, we'd been on the road for a while and hadn't passed a single car the entire time. I woke up to the sound of scratching underneath the car that I brushed off as an animal. Then I heard steady plopping out in the mud like someone was circling our car but didn't see a damn thing. I elbowed my girl thinking she was still asleep, but she was fully awake and frozen in place and just said, I know. She said she had this feeling that something was off from the second we pulled into that spot. We held deathly still for a bit longer, still reckoning it was a deer or something, in denial. I got a literal wave of goosebumps when we heard that faint scratching start up yet again. This time we bolted into action, and she threw the car into reverse pretty quickly. Suddenly she screamed, There's someone there! Oh my god! As she saw a figure dive into a nearby bush, lit up from the reverse lights. I looked but didn't see anything. We both were in 100% panic mode and practically skidded back onto the road. The rest of the drive back into CA was unremarkable. But we did have a motorcycle tail us for most of the way back after that. From a decent distance, luckily. But seeing that faint light bobbing far behind us gave us the creeps on top of everything. Probably unrelated, but who knows. Everything felt creepy and wrong for the rest of the night. Be careful on Highway 299 in Oregon, guys.